Welcome everyone to this module on prepositions. In this series of lectures on prepositions, this is lecture number three, and here we are going to discuss on prepositions which have other meanings than time and place, and also what do we mean by prepositional verbs. Prepositions can have other meanings, uh, meanings other than place or time. In the previous video, we had discussed about prepositions that talk about place and also prepositions that talk about time. Now we are going to look at some prepositions which have other meanings. For example, we were talking about the weather. According to the newspaper, the strike is over. According to can mean the newspaper says. Most people are against these changes, where against is something uh, meaning opposing. We can have this pizza for lunch, for tea. As for lunch, I'll get a sandwich. Now, when I say for, it's talking about a purpose. I'm reading a book by Shakespeare. By here means written by Shakespeare. You need a pullover, so I'm knitting one for you. For here means that this is one, this one is for you, or the purpose of this is for you. You did do anything for the sake of peace and quiet. For the sake of here means in order to have something. Let's look at some more examples where prepositions have other meanings than time or place. Are you for the plan or are you in favor of the plan? Where for or favor of mean supporting. Mrs. Peterson is in charge of the department. Here we have a phrase preposition in charge of which means the head of the department. Can I use a pencil instead of a pen? Instead of is again a phrasal preposition which means in place of. I went to a lecture on Einstein. Here on does not talk about place or time but it talks about a specific the purpose or about whom. On behalf of everyone here, I'd like to say thank you. This car at least does at least 50 miles to the gallon, where two means per gallon. It's up to you to make your own decision. You have to make your own decision. So here we see that uh, many prepositions can have other meanings than time or place. So now let's look closely at some of those prepositions. We'll start with of. Of has a number of different meanings, but basically it talks about relationship. The handle of the door. That means the handle which is related to the door. A tin of soup. Some of my friends. A first sight of land. We can also use of in the following pattern. She is an actress of great ability, which would mean she has great ability. These souvenirs are of no value. He was a man of medium build. Some prepositions have the same meaning as a conjunction. We decided against a picnic in view of the weather, where in view of could mean because the weather was bad. So, if you use because, which is a conjunction, we have the same meaning. 
or if you use in view of which has the same meaning like a conjunction and such prepositions are as well as in addition to besides in spite of despite as a result of in consequence of because of due to in view of or on account of so if you are converting a sentence which is complex in nature or compound in nature we can change them if we want to change them into simple sentences we can you we have to use prepositions such as these in place of the conjunctions or replacing the conjunction and still get the same meaning in the sentence so these are some prepositions which have the same meaning as conjunctions now let's look at the usage of with with has the following meanings i went to the party with a friend that means we are together pete is the man with long hair that means he has long hair i'll cut the wood with my electric saw they set to work with enthusiasm with people watching i felt embarrassed because people were watching now without is the opposite of with who's the man without any shoes on they set to work but without enthusiasm we use with and by to express the means of travel or usage we use with to talk about an instrument a thing we use to carry out an action for example the thieves broke the door down with a hammer just stir this with a wooden spoon could you so here we are talking about an instrument or a thing we use to carry out an action by is more abstract it refers to the means in general rather than to a specific thing for example i paid by credit card the motor is powered by electricity they broke the door down by force so rather than a specific thing like with it is used to talk about means in general we use by before a gerund they got in by breaking down the road so we cannot say they got in with breaking down the door but it is by breaking down the door by plus a noun is a phrase which we use for means of transport we also use by plus noun like uh, for me expressing means of transport but we generally do not use the when we talk about the noun the there for example i prefer to travel by train we don't say i prefer to travel by the train or with the train but it's by train so we can also say like i prefer to travel by bike i prefer to travel by car or by road i prefer to travel by taxi by bus or by coach by train by tube or by rain by boat by ship by ferry by hovercraft by sea by plane or by air we do not use by to mean a specific bike or a specific car for example i'll go on my bike not i will go by my bike so when because here the bike is specific it means my bike so we do not use by because by is used to talk about general means not specific means sometimes on is also used to talk about the means of transport we can say on my bike we can say in the car or in my car or in a taxi or on the bus on the train on the boat on the plane etc 
so if you are using if you really want to use the article the then it's rather better to use on the bus rather than by bus on foot always means walking i prefer to go on foot or i prefer to go to walk we don't say go by foot we can also use by for means of communication like by letter by post by phone by telegram by t by fax etc i spoke to andy by phone or i spoke to andy on the phone i sent the information by post so andy isn't on the phone which could also mean andy hasn't got a phone Now let's look at the usage of as and like. We use as to express a role or function. Maria has come along as our guide. She's our guide. I'm having to use the sofa as my bed. Here, as my bed indicates that it is my bed. We use like to express a comparison. She slapped his face. The noise was like a pistol shot. I think Louise looks a little bit like Marilyn Monroe. Now here, in order to make a comparison, we use the preposition like. Now there is a difference in comparison. Uh, like in the usage of as and like he speaks as an expert he is after all a professor he talks like an expert but really he knows nothing so when i say as we are trying to express the role or function but when we use like it's generally used to make only a comparison now there are many idiomatic phrases beginning with the preposition and most of them are without a on an or the that means without any articles so idiomatic phrases could mean a meaning which is different to the literal sense of the words in the phrase all the money paid by investors is now at risk now the phrase at risk could mean that it's a great problem. Mark always drives at top speed, which means the maximum speed. I dialed the wrong number by mistake. I'd really like to buy this picture if it's for sale. Try to see it from my point of view. You have to pay half the cost, cost of the holiday in advance. I can't stop. I'm in a hurry. Let's look at some more idiomatic phrases. I drive about 10,000 miles a year on average. Did you go there on a holiday or on business? If you observe carefully, in each of these idiomatic phrases, we are not using the articles A, N or the. Mr. Jones is on leave this week. He'll be in the office next Monday. There are so many different computers on the market. I saw it on television. I heard it on the radio. I'm afraid the machine is out of order. So now let's try to understand the difference between in time and on time and idiomatic phrase. These space are different in meaning. A in time for or to means early enough, but on time means punctually. We arrived at the time at the hotel in time for dinner that means early enough to have dinner the train left on time at 11:23 that means it left punctually at the time mentioned so when we say we arrived in good time for dinner it means plenty of time to spare we arrived just in time for dinner could mean not much time to spare 
Sometimes we also use the preposition phrase in the end or at the end. But there is a slight difference between these two phrases. In the end means finally. But at the end of means when it finishes. There are many arguments but in the end we reached agreement which means at last we reached agreement. No one wanted to go home at the end of the holiday which means when the holiday finished. So let's compare them. In the beginning that means at first the company struggled to survive but now it is extremely successful. The students returned to Oxford at the beginning of the academic year. That means when it finishes. So when we say in the beginning, so it means like at the first or at first. And um, But when we say at the beginning, at that point of time, uh, that point of time of the academic year where it starts again. Similarly, let's look at the difference between in the way and on the way. In the way means blocking the way, but on the way means a journey. Okay. I couldn't get the car out. Someone had parked right in the way. It's a long journey. We did better stop for a meal on the way. So on the way means on a journey. In the way means blocking the way. Verbs can combine with adverbs or prepositions. When it combines with an adverb, we generally we say it's a phrasal verb. We sat down. Verbs can also combine with preposition. When it combines with a preposition, we generally say it's a prepositional verb. We looked at the menu. Where down is an adverb and at is a preposition. Sometimes both of them are also called as phrasal verbs in a bigger context. Now a prepositional verb always has an object. Like we looked at the menu. So it's always the menu is the object. A phrasal verb sometimes has an object. Sometimes it can maybe it can either go before. The adverb can either go before and after the object. For example, in the sentence we sat down, it doesn't have an object. And the adverb can go either before or after the object sometimes, if it has one. We put away the dishes. Now, away is an adverb. And the object here is the dishes. We put the dishes away. So it can either go before the object or after the object which is not the case with prepositional verbs they always go before the object right so a, a verb plus preposition is called a prepositional verb i was looking at the photo looking verb at preposition looking at a prepositional verb we didn't go into all the details go verb into preposition go into a prepositional verb prepositions combine with verbs to form prepositional verbs like believe in look into insist on hint at see to come from look after cope with consist of hope for feel like and many more the preposition always has an object, believe in God, look into the matter, insist on absolute silence. So there is always an object which comes after the prepositional verb. Now, how to understand if it's a phrasal verb or a prepositional verb? The adverbs can go before or after the object, but the preposition goes only before its object. For example, Lisa gave away her computer. Lisa gave her computer away. Now, it can go either way, which is right. So, that means it's a phrasal verb and not a prepositional verb. Lisa paid for the meal. You can't say Lisa paid the meal for. 
it's only the paid for the meal so since for cannot go after the object meal it's a prepositional verb a pronoun goes before the adverb but after the preposition for example lisa gave it away here it is the pronoun and which goes before the adverb away so it's also one more way to observe if it's a phrasal verb or a prepositional verb whereas lisa paid for it we can't say lisa paid it for it's only lisa paid for it so it the pronoun goes after the preposition so some more some words are always adverbs like away back or out some words are always prepositions like at for from into of with so when we get these words we can say they are prepositional verbs and we get when away back or out we can say they are phrasal verbs but some words can be either an adverb or a preposition like about along down in off on over round through and up so they can either be an adverb or a preposition in such cases we need to understand look at the context and see if the op if it's an op if it has an object if the verb adverb or preposition whether it goes before and after the adverb also after the object also by that means we can understand if that's an adverb if that's a phrasal verb or a prepositional verb but if with phrasal verbs the stress usually falls on the adverb especially when it comes at the end of the clause for example lisa gave her computer away what time did you get up so the stress is on the adverb with prepositional verbs the stress usually falls on the verb lisa paid for the meal it depends on the weather so it's not on for or on the stress is on the verb paid and depend so in this video we have tried to understand the other meanings that for which prepositions are used rather than time or place and also a quick look at what is a prepositional verb and what is a phrasal verb and how can we distinguish between them both Thank you for listening. Have a good day.